today I'm going to talk about the best type of real estate investment to buy versus the worst type of real estate investment to buy. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Ask James Wise Show. And people always ask me, what's the best investment? What's the worst investment? So let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. Now, Really quickly, though, what I want to make sure you're aware of is when I talk about the best type of investment versus the worst type of investment, the scope of this video, we're going to be talking about long term holds, right? So we're not even going to be considering flips or wholesale deals or anything of that nature, right? So think long term. The very best type of real estate investment long term to buy is going to be a four unit apartment building. And the very worst type of long-term real estate investment that you can buy is going to be a five-unit apartment building. Now, you're probably a little bit confused. You're like, wait, the very best investment's a four-unit, and then if I add one more unit to it, it becomes the very worst investment? Yes, that is correct. You see, what you need to understand is the most important thing about buying real estate investment for the long-term hold is the financing, folks. The financing is why real estate is such a powerful investment vehicle to allow you to increase your net worth. You see, there is no other business in the world where they will give you the very best type of financing. I'm talking about 30-year loans, low-interest loans, tax-deductible this stuff is amazing, right? If you're trying to open up a, a restaurant, a bar, a tattoo shop, insurance business, they will not give you these types of loans, right? So real estate uh, is so attractive because of this financing. But here's the thing. Not all financing is created equal. You see, there's what's called residential financing, and then there's commercial financing. Now, residential financing is the very best financing there is. That is where you get to come in with 25% down. You get a 30-year low-interest fixed-interest loan to pay off your investment, right? So you bring 25% to the table. The bank's going to bring 75% to the table. The only downside to this residential financing is your A, going to be limited to 10 of these type of loans, and B, you could only get them on one to four unit properties, okay? So the alarm bell should be going off in your head, the aha moment. You see, four units under one roof is the very most units you can get using the very best best financing there is to offer, right? I don't know about you, but I would rather get 40 rental income checks for my mortgages as opposed to 10. Now, conversely, if you jump up one unit to the five-unit apartment building, you are now moving to commercial financing, which is very different, right? It's going to be based upon the historical performance of the asset, okay? No longer is it going to be simply based on your credit and your ability uh, to be a good debtor. No, no, no. Now the banks want to see rent rolls, tax returns on the building itself, right? So you get a lot of people that buy real estate as a tax shelter if they're not claiming everything, or you get a lot of people that just don't know what they're doing. Uh, if they're not claiming everything, writing everything down in the proper way, your financing could be all screwed up. Just thinking you only need to put down 25% is no longer going to be the case. In addition to that, don't think you get those 30-year terms. No, no, no. They might amortize it for 30 years, more commonly 25 or 20, but typically you have to pay the entire thing off within five years or continue paying a bunch of fees to uh, refinance it or do balloon payments. And don't think just because they gave you a a loan one time, they'll be willing to do it again five years after the fact, right? Because here's the biggest thing you have to understand too. Now that you're in the commercial financing space, lenders like big loans, okay? The bigger the loan, the better, right? So a five-unit apartment building is actually the smallest type of apartment building that these lenders are putting into their portfolios, right? So it's the least attractive to them. So they're not going to be willing to work with you as easily because you're not really giving your lenders 
business that they like. In addition to that, what you need to understand is when you're in the residential financing space, it's very easy to find big national lenders that will loan to investors who live in any of the 50 states of the United States of America on a property that is located in any of the 50 states, right? So you could be an investor living in California, working with a bank headquartered in New York to buy a property in Ohio. No problem. When you're in the commercial space, it's totally different. Every bank is going to have differing criteria of lender or uh, of borrowers that they like, right? They might only want to loan to a borrower who lives in one of maybe 10 states. In addition to that, they may only want to lend on a property that's in one of 10 states. They might not even be the same, right? So uh, the thought process of, oh, I'm in California, the bank's in New York, the property's in Ohio, that might not work for every bank, right? Some banks might have no problem lending on properties in Ohio, but they don't do business with borrowers who live in California. Maybe they would lend on the property if it was in Ohio, but only if that lender or if that borrower lived in New York where the bank is headquartered, right? You run into all of those types of things, right? So it becomes this whole like minefield of unknowns and getting things done, right? And to to recap on another uh, thing I mentioned, right? They look at the historical performance of the building when they're assessing how much they'll loan to you. But here's the other thing. As I said earlier, lenders consider the five-unit apartment building the least attractive type of loan they could write because it's small. The other thing is the folks that own five-unit apartment buildings, these are typically the least professional and least experienced rental property owners, right? So if you're trying to buy a five-unit apartment building, odds are much higher you're going to be dealing with a mom-and-pop landlord whose accounting is all screwed up than if you're trying to buy a hundred-unit apartment building from a professionally managed and ran company. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.